Hello everyone, Pioneer and Apple here with a Merry Christmas, or by the time you see this, a belated Merry Christmas and possibly a Happy New Year. But whenever you're watching this, today we're watching Shooty's first proper Doctor Who episode, the 2023 Christmas special, The Church on Ruby Road, written by Russell T Davies. The first of Shooty's solo adventures, unlike where he popped in at the end of The Giggle, a proper look at him in the lead role, one I hope he'll live up to, and the first appearance of his companion, Ruby Sunday, played by Millie Gibson. Not only is it carrying all that baggage, this is the first Christmas special since Twice Upon a Time, returning to the older tradition that was changed into a New Year's special. So without further ado, let's see if this episode paints us hopeful for the new direction of the show. The episode starts with a cold open narrated by The Doctor, on a great set that is used to great effect, especially paired with the Carol of the Bells, selling the atmosphere of all scenes here. But it is a little weird that whenever we come back here the song always starts playing. We see a hooded figure dropping off a baby at a church, the baby being named Ruby, found at the church on Ruby Road. And just before the credits, the Doctor turns up quite emotional, the look on his face just drawing you in to want to know what happened. Then we get the same credits we've had the last three specials, just with edited credits. So it looks like it'll be around for a while. We then see that Ruby has just told the same story that we saw to an interviewer, Davina McCall. Played by... well, Davina McCall. What a coincidence! You'll get that one later in the story. Oh, and that's a coincidence. Apparently this is some sort of who do you think you are type show for orphans. Or, as Ruby is, a foundling, which sounds quite Star Wars, but is apparently the correct term for someone under these circumstances. Ruby was adopted by a serial fosterer, Carla Sunday, played by Michelle Greenidge, who we'll see later. The production is interrupted by distant cackling, and we see little hands start to mess with the production, while Davina tells Ruby that with things like DNA tests, they can now track down who her parents were. Before the production goes to shit, and Davina gets assaulted via plug. That's two episodes in a row for head injuries. Let's see if we can get a trifecta. We see Ruby playing in a band on the 22nd of December, where the Doctor watches in one of this incarnation's many outfits. Once we see all of them, we'll have to do some sort of ranking. And much like with Davina, things start to go wrong, thanks to Little Hands. The next night, Ruby is at a club, while Fifteen appears to be doing what my father calls gay dancing. And while, yeah, clubbing doesn't exactly fit the Doctor Who archetype, you can clearly infer he's just trying to fit in at the same place Ruby is, like he did the previous night. But while he is attractive, that outfit is a bit naff. I like the kilt, but that shirt needs to be burnt along with all the How to Spot a Gamer t-shirts. If the scene lasted any longer, it would annoy me, but the way it is, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. That's great. And look, he still has Eleven's lack of coordination. He's just kind of happily flailing, which does fit in with what he said in The Giggle, where 15 seems to be happier and more carefree as an incarnation, since 14 seems to have stayed on Earth to work through his trauma, before going back and becoming 15 properly, which might have a similar effect to something that vexed me with 13, where I feel her emotions could have been communicated better. So I hope 15 will get more range than just dopely happy. And looking at the rest of the episode, it does seem like he will go out of that shell. And much like the shirt, I wish to never hear for this terrible dance music again. Ruby's drink is messed with, no, not in the Cosby way. <laughs> but by another hand shifting it, causing her to knock it over, and 15 to teleport to the rescue, claiming he is... You were just over there. Health and safety. Genitalic division. Which is a nice callback. Health and safety. You be health, I'll be safety. Ah. He asks her about her bad luck and clumsiness, leaving her hanging as he leaves, and she ends up dropping a glass anyway. Ruby and her friends leave the club, her talking about her bad luck, and a giant snowman above them threatening to fall thanks to more goblin hands. 
But the Doctor and his Adam Sandler movie looking screwdriver change the light and sends them on their way. Only for a mother and her baby to need to be shooed away by 15 as it falls, which ends up in a funny resolution, leading into another nice scene where a cop who happens to be around investigates the Doctor in relation to the whole snowman thing. And the Doctor Sherlock deduces his marital status and tells him to go for it. It's a nice interaction on all levels, and even with my misgivings in the scene before, this really cemented to me that this, while I'm not sure of the quality and probably won't have a strong opinion until this first season is done, that Shooty is really trying to work with the material and trying to give a good performance. The next day, Ruby delivers shopping home and we meet two of her neighbours, the meek Abdul and the persnickety Mrs. Flood arguing about the appearance of the TARDIS on the sidewalk. The goblins mess with Ruby again, and she makes her way home. And now we get to meet Carla, and her darling mother Cherry, who have done the apartment up with lights up the wazoo that will be important later. And Carla tells Ruby that they're fostering a baby. And you really feel not only their excitement at getting to help raise a child as fostering is important to them, but also the connection that they have as a family even though they aren't related. It's a real testament to the script and actors how well they fit together. Cherry wants a cup of tea and is ignored, and Ruby points out the coincidence that the baby appeared on Christmas Eve, just like her, and she gets a nice moment with Carla. The baby arrives and is named Lulu Bell. And it's pointed out how bad that name is. But it is funny how later on the Doctor will proclaim the name Glorious. Cherry doesn't get tea again, and Carla decides to go shopping, leaving Ruby to look after the baby. It's here we see a lovely detail, and one that the Doctor sees later. Every foster child has a photo taken up on the fridge. A nice detail to Carla's character, and a product of a few good moments in the story. Ruby gets a call from Davina, who is having the same bad luck as Ruby, not being able to find her parents, and also being put in a wheelchair before it being inferred that she is killed via Christmas tree. It's a good scene and adds to the threat, but is a little silly and forgettable. I know that Davina is playing herself, and I feel like I would get more out of it if I knew who the hell she was, but when she got smushed, I kind of thought, mm, oh well. Ruby hears the goblins taking Lulu, and finds a photo of one, and uses quick thinking to follow them to the roof. It's nice to see her take initiative to take Lulu back, not just waiting for the Doctor to help with the problem. Usually, the new companion only gets to be competent at the end of their first episode. She gets a proper look at the goblins, and follows by grabbing onto their sky ladder, something the Doctor jabs at her for charmingly, as he follows her lead. She eloquently communicates the situation, Got the baby. and the Doctor shows us an invention, intelligent gloves, that will help you hold onto ladders like in this exact situation. Kind of clever, and used well, not too OP. We also hear another mention of Mavity, a running joke from Wild Blue Yonder, which I suppose is nice, but keeping a running joke going that long, one that will confuse some watchers, considering that this is meant to be the start of a new slate for the show, but also Disney kind of ruined that by titling this as Special 4, and that probably didn't help. They're pulled up to the Goblin ship and captured, and the design of the Goblin Ship is pretty cool. We don't really learn how it does anything, as it certainly isn't technological, but I think that since the Goblins themselves have their own logic and way of existing, as defined by the story that we'll touch on soon, it doesn't really matter if we know exactly how the ship works. The Goblins, as the Doctor says, work abstractly within the rules of coincidence, luck, and ropes, which is all pretty creative like how the toy maker the episode previous worked on the logic of play. The Doctor figures out that all the luck and coincidence around Ruby and Lulu Bell makes the baby tastier, and the luck they've been giving Ruby is what attracted the Doctor. The goblins fucking with her for weeks to weave her into events, as they are rudimentary time travellers, something the Doctor takes offence to. The two have pretty good chemistry, and with Fifteen being, like, the sixth incarnation to talk about hanging out with Harry Houdini, he learns the way the ship works, filled with ropes, needing to pull the right one to manipulate the ship. They head deeper into the ship to save Lulu before the goblins can eat her, 
and we get to hear and see a performance of the hit UK Christmas single, The Goblin Song, by Janice Goblin, but actually sung by Christina Rotondo. And yeah, this song is pure camp, but I can't help but love it. And it gets even better as when the song ends, and the Doctor and Ruby crash the Goblin's party, they distract the Goblins by continuing the song with their own verses. Once Fifteen gets a little curtsy in as he's addressing the Goblin King. While all the singing is great, let's talk about the villain designs. The Goblins themselves are done with mostly makeup and prosthetics, with CGI assistance. And the fact that they are played by proper actors and sized matched with camera perspective and CGI gives them a very unique way of looking. And that's also the same for the Goblin King, who is a very large puppet slash animatronic. And while his appearances are a little underwhelming, as he doesn't do much, he still looks pretty good. Although I think he would have been better with at least a little bit of a speaking role. All the singing allows the Doctor to buy time for the ropes he messed with to unravel. So with the super gloves, he gets them and out, landing back on Ruby's roof, even if they don't do a very good job at showing inertia and forces, as they land pretty peacefully, even though the glove supposedly made them heavier. Cherry and Fifteen get a good interaction, and even though she's funny, she still gets no tea. Fifteen decides they want to luck-proof the house, turning the heater off, unstacking floor-level items, and the scene is fun. We even get a great emotional moment as Fifteen notices the foster collage. They remember not to leave the baby, continuing their great chemistry, and Carla comes back, who just seems kind of a little too oblivious and good-hearted for her own good. Carla points out all the coincidence around them, not even able to be stopped by Ruby unloading her emotions about not finding her mother, which is a good emotional moment and well acted. The coincidences pile up and Fifteen gets a good little moment. The house starts to crack and although everyone is fine, there's no trace of Ruby. A point exacerbated when Fifteen leaves for a moment and returns. This is quite clever, as once he comes back, there is a lot of detail missing. The lights are gone, Ruby's room is gone, and the photos from the fridge are gone. Carla seems heartless as well. Fifteen trying to get her to remember Ruby in honestly one of my favourite scenes of the episode. This exact scene being what I personally think is Fifteen's what they call an I am the doctor moment. His emotions feel real and you really believe it when he vows to fix the situation. The crack that ran through the apartment was apparently the goblins going back in time, deciding to take Ruby instead of Lulu. So Fifteen runs outside to the TARDIS to stop them being seen by Mrs. Flood who, after this, unexplicably becomes a different character. Terrible writing or planning a later story arc? Who knows with those messy plot points in the Star Beast and Giggle. The Doctor appears in the past to see Ruby's mum leaving and her being snatched by the goblins. So paired with Carol of the Bells again, which the goblins also seem to be doing their little version of, he somehow gets to the roof of the church without anyone noticing. And in a clever, intense scene, it uses the heaviness of the gloves he mentioned earlier, and by jumping off the roof, to pull the goblin ship down and spear both it and the king through with the tip of the steeple. Just like what happened to Rassilon. This causes the ship to unravel. In a neat visual, and Ruby to fall from the sky, Fifteen catching her and setting events right. But as he makes it back to the TARDIS, the mother is still walking away. So, is this a mistake? Or do you think she took a moment to see the goblin ship and watch, thinking, I just gave my baby away and this happens? What the fuck? Fifteen turns away and makes for Christmas again. Mrs. Flood watching with her sudden personality change. And Fifteen finds Ruby and Carla again but still with the crack in the roof. Fifteen babbles joyfully to Ruby and says he forgot something, running off to save Davina, however he knew she was in danger, and coming back. Mrs. Flood still semi-nonplussed, but he takes a second before seeing Ruby again, wondering if he might be the bad luck. Flood weirdly compliments him and asks what's wrong, and Cherry finally gets her tea, let's go! <laughs> Fifteen decides to leave with Flood seeing him off. And Ruby figures out the whole time travel thing from his ramblings 
and kisses Carla before running out to see him in a very funny scene. Flood sends her towards the TARDIS, and she does the whole look around with nice camera angles. Before joining him inside, him introducing himself again, and then presumably running off into time and space. But I'm sure we'll find out in like, half a year when the show starts again, but for the love of God, I hope they don't do another scene like in the Slovene two-parter where, oh, where have you been, companion? It's been a year. Because her leaving Carla feels pretty abrupt. So I hope that the time machine actually works this time. But hold on, there's an after credits scene where Abdul comes back, shocked about the TARDIS, only for Flood to tell him not to worry, and then... Never seen a TARDIS before. I'm sorry, what? This better not be just a fun scene tacked on the end, Russell, because that's not how Doctor Who fans work. She better be some time traveller or cosmic entity or Auntie Pat or something, because that is too much of a shock gasp what the fuck moment for it to be anything else. So that was the church on Ruby Road. Did it live up to the hype? Well, Shooty did well so that in one full episode, 15 has become a pretty doctorish doctor. And that is the most you can hope out of any new actor. Ruby, while well, when paired with Russell's writing, can feel a little bit like a Rose rehash, has a lot of unique personality, and Millie Gibson was pretty good in the role. The villains, while not very memorable, removed from their music, fit the story well, and had creative aspects such as their luck-based tastes and their rope language. Every set looked pretty fantastic as well, and although the ending did feel a little weak, especially with Flood's odd interjections, the rest of the story held a pretty good emotional tone, especially once Ruby disappears. So although there were things that I feel could have been better, Cherry still got her cup of tea in the end, so I'll give this episode a neat 8.5 out of 10. Much like with the specials beforehand, it's not amazing, but had far less weighing it down, like the Star Beast's resolution, or the Giggles' business. But while I was a little more biased to the 60th, this rating is on pure quality of the episode, not just how much I enjoyed watching it. Thank you everybody so much for watching my review of The Church on Ruby Road. Please like the video if you liked it, comment down below if you wish, and consider subscribing to the channel, and if you do, ring that notification bell so you're told every single time that I make an upload. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Toast. A little piece of toast. Because there's so much to choose from. There's brown bread, white bread, all sorts of wholemeal bread. It comes in friendly packages with writing on the side.